Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry it's been a little while since my last video. There's been some time in between videos just because I've had a very busy life and some things going on lately and YouTube gets a back burner when that happens. So I apologize for that. Today I want to talk about, this is a little don't do this video, kind of like I've had in the past, like don't use crossover calculators and don't use active crossovers blindly and stuff like that. It's kind of like that. I, I don't like to do those negative videos, but I'm seeing a lot of people build little desktop speakers or Bluetooth speakers or whatever, and it's very fashionable lately to rear mount the speaker behind the baffle and then do a chamfer or round over or some kind of thing to the front of the baffle, uh, especially if the baffle is made out of solid wood or something like that. I'm seeing a lot of this on like Instagram and other YouTube videos and stuff, not so much on the die-hard audio forums. So anyways, getting to the point, I got two baffles here. Uh, one baffle is your typical flush mount tweeter. Uh, the tweeter is just going to drop in there and be flush with the baffle face uh, like you're used to seeing, I guess. The, I'll call it the normal way. And then I got this baffle here, which is a whole, just a little oversized, the size of the dome itself on the tweeter, and then it's got a 45 de degree chamfer all the way around. For that cool rear mounted look, uh, the, the tweeter can go in behind there and it looks really rad, I guess, is the idea. Um, and then I'm gonna measure each of them and uh, see if there's a difference. Um, I actually haven't done it yet, so I said this is a don't do this kind of negative video, but Maybe I'll be totally wrong and there's no problem doing this. One thing I should mention is uh, there are waveguides and these are specifically designed baffles to have kind of a flare from the dome itself and uh, these things are not bad. These things are great and I actually like them a lot but that is a different situation than this style of baffle where uh, you're just accommodating the tweeter. You're just making a little bit of a flare and a space for the tweeter to be in. So anyways guys, let's get on with it, let's do this. So I chose the Dayton ND28F-6 for this test um, because I've used this tweeter a lot. It's a budget tweeter that I could see a lot of people using for this kind of application of little boom boxes and things like that. And because um, I had it sitting around and I haven't tested it yet, so I figured it'd be fun. Overall, it's a great tweeter. I've used it on several occasions. It's small, it's cheap, and it is a good choice for a lot of speakers. Um, I would recommend this tweeter if you are in need of a very cheap tweeter. The first thing I needed to do was make a couple of baffles, so I made some 7-inch wide baffles out of some scrap MDF I had laying around. I, um, I mounted the tweeter two and a quarter inches from the top of this baffle. This tweeter, the uh, Dayton ND28F-6, is really easy to flush mount. I think it's a two and an eighth inch hole saw on the outside, and then whatever size uh, Forstner to drill at the middle, and then with a chisel I can just take out that material on the inside of the flush mounting and just snaps right in. It's a perfect fit. I've done this countless times with this tweeter and it, it does work. So to get the fancy baffle style I wanted, I, I used a chamfer. I could have used a round over or something like that, but uh, here I am just setting up the router table to, to complete this operation. And because there was still a bit of a lip, you can see um, I just used a straight bit on the router to take out the backside a little bit for the tweeter to mount to. So that's what I'm doing here. Overall, the baffles turned out really good. This is kind of nice because I ended up nailing the, the hole so good that it just presses in there and holds on its own. And it's dead flush too. Can't ask for it any better than that. Let's begin. Okay, I started with the flush mounted tweeter. And here are the measurements. I'll, I'll talk about the comparisons in a minute, but I just wanted to talk about this tweeter specifically. I just fluked out with these baffled dimensions, but obviously they worked out really good because above 3000 hertz, this thing is pretty darn flat. It also matches the um, 
measurements from the manufacturer pretty well. It's got about 86 dB sensitivity and that peak at about 2 kilohertz or just below is um, real. It's part of the driver measurement. Uh, it's just because the chamber is a bit small for it. They're trying to pack um, a low power tweeter into a small chamber just because it's a bit of a budget tweeter. So that's what you get. It still can be worked with. You can use the high pass filter to smack that into place and get like a 2500 hertz crossover out of this thing just fine. So not a bad result here and um, like I mentioned the file is available for download. Okay then I took the tweeter out of the flush mounted baffle and I mounted it to the rear side of this chamfered baffle. Then I set it up for measurement. Okay guys, at this point I'm actually surprised it's not as bad as I thought it would be. There's uh, some waveguide loading and then the top octave, it loses some efficiency. But it's actually not as, I, I expected more diffraction and a ragged response. It's still not a good idea and um, you know, I think I'll cover that as I show you these measurements. But uh, it's, it's surprising to me. At this point I'm going to just get the FRD file and I'm also going to take an impedance measurement right now so I can get the ZMA file of the flush baffle, not the chamfered baffle. I don't want people to try and duplicate it because um, it would have to be pretty precise. Anybody can duplicate a flush mounted tweeter, but not what I did here. So anyways, I'm going to get those measurements, put them on my Dropbox so you can download them and use that file if you want. I only, I'm only testing one sample today. This isn't a driver review like my other ones, but at least that'll be in the database for people to download and use if they want because it's not a bad little tweeter. So anyways guys, uh, let's talk about the measurements. Okay, so um, this is, the red line is the flush mounted baffle like you saw before. And the green line is when it's rear mounted in that chamfer baffle. And you can see what it's done to the response. This is, like I say, it's not as bad as I expected. I think if I went with a round over or just a straight through hole or something like that, it would have been worse. Uh, we would have seen some pretty gnarly results, but in any case, if you were trying to design a crossover with the manufacturer's measurements or something like that, you can see how far off you would be. Uh, this tweeter would sound really bright with a dull top end. Uh, it lost some sensitivity in the top end, and because of the waveguide loading type effect, it gained a bunch of SPL in the low end. And this would be probably pretty hard to work with just because of the transition around seven or eight thousand kilohertz. Um, it just seven or eight thousand hertz. It's just a sharp transition and hard to filter this thing. So you can see it's a bad idea. Okay, there was guys. There's the results. I hope you found that um, helpful. I think you can see that this isn't always a good idea. It may look really cool, especially with a solid wood baffle, um, but. It does, come, it does come with some issues, and I don't think it's a good idea, unless you can measure it. And even then, I'm not sure I would do it. Um, but if you are gonna do it, you should at least measure it and know what you're getting when you do it. So with that in mind, guys, I hope to catch you on the next one. Please check out some of my other videos and subscribe to my channel so that you can stay on top of uh, what I got coming down, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.